Hello, Evan. My name is Sonnet LaBay, and I am one of the members of the editorial board of Brick Books. I'm currently uh, acting as one of the two co-acquisitions editors for Brick. Um, so on behalf of Brick, I'd like to welcome you to the launch of David Bradford's new book, Dream of No One But Myself. Thank you so much for joining us. Pause, pause and snaps. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that tonight we're gathering in virtual space with our feet on the ground of various territories. Much of the work of Brit Books takes place on the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Huron-Wendat, and Mississaugas of the Credit Peoples in what's called Southern Ontario. But our editors, authors, readers, and readers from many backgrounds are situated from coast to coast to coast in what's called Canada on the traditional and unceded territories of over 600 nations who've cared for Turtle Island from time immemorial. While living and working on these lands, we're committed to hearing and returning the rightful imaginative space to the poetry, songs, and stories that have been untold, undertold, wrongly told, and suppressed through colonization. I'd also like to specifically acknowledge that Jodjage, Montreal, where David lives and joins us from tonight is unceded indigenous land and is known as a gathering place for many First Nations. I'd like to recognize the Ganyangehaga Nation as the custodians of those lands and waters. And I'd also like to say, to the Halkuminam speaking salmon people of Vancouver Island, and particularly to this Nenemo, from whose treaty territory I am joining you. Um, I would like to uh, also just give you a brief introduction to our readers tonight. Um, joining David Bradford is Anahita Jamali Rod, a text forward artist born in Iran and currently based in Jojage on the territor traditional territory of the Ganyan Gahaga. Jamali Rod's work is founded on techno materialist histories of dominant ideologies, class struggle, desire, place, displacement, and silence. Their most recent collection of poetry, Still, was published by Talon Books in spring of 2021. And Cecily Nicholson, Nicholson is the author of Triage from the Poplars, winner of the BC Poetry Prize. Sorry, Triage and from the Poplars, the winners of the BC Poetry Prize. And Wayside, Wayside Sang, which won the Governor General's Award for English language poetry. She volunteers with community impacted by carcerality and works in gallery education. And Cecily was the 2021 writer in residence for the University of Windsor. David Bradford, our poet, editor, and is a poet and editor and organizer based in Geojage, Montreal. He's the author of several chat books, including Nell Zink is Damn Free from Black Czech Press in 2017 and The Plot from House House Press in 2018. His work has appeared in the Capilano Review, The Tiny, Filling Station, The Fiddlehead, Carte Blanche, and elsewhere. He holds an MFA from the University of Guelph and is a founding editor. I of one of them. I don't know them personally. Sorry, I thought somebody was saying something. Okay. And a founding editor of House House Press. This is uh, this is David's first book. I was I just want to say I was so it was such a privilege. It was such a privilege to work with you, um, David, and getting to, getting to read and talk about your brilliant poems. Um, I, I I encourage everyone who hasn't already got a copy in their hands to get one and go read the 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 statement, um, like the official marketing statement that says all the beautiful things. Um, good about, marketing statement. We did good on the marketing statement. Yeah. Well. Well, it says all the things I love and it says some things that other people love, but I want to get a give time to uh, just directly to you. So um, let's start. I'll just hand it over to you now, David. For sure. Um, thanks so much, Sonnet. Um, it's good to, to share the space with you, but also it was a good editing process. I mean, the whole process of Brick has been good, but um, I feel like it was, a, it, was a, it was a piece of work that you're able to hold and think about in ways that not a lot of people up until that point had so it was it was a, it was a really good time early pandemic times but um it was a good place to kind of put some energy together um so i'm glad you're here um so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get started i'll talk a little bit more later on 
but um, we're going to get a little bit of reading from Cecily, uh, then we'll get uh, some poems from Anahita, who's here with me. I've got some other people in the room who are being very quiet, which is nice, um, but uh, <laughs> they're all distanced and being safe. Um, but it's nice to have them here. Um, and then after, after um, Cecily and Anahita read, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the book and um, probably read for about 15 minutes. And then we can kind of open it up to a conversation. Um, Cecily, Anahita, and I can kind of talk a little bit. Um, Sana can join in. Um, and um, we'll, we'll open it up to folks in the room. If people have any questions, that'll be a good time to start kind of dropping them in the comments. And um, we'll, make sure we, we'll make sure we get to a bunch of them. Um, same with, with you know, quest, questions, but also comments, whatever you got. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to field them. Um, within reasonable measure, but still. Um, so I think we'll get going. Um, if Cecily's ready, I would love to hear. Um, ready, ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for the invitation. Um, thank you, Sonnet, um, for that important and, and uh, um, detailed um, acknowledgement. I will add that I'm joining you today, or folks today from Kikite territory, these are um, traditional waterways of the Musqueam, Kwantlen, and Ketsi peoples as well, alongside a river known by many as the Stalo. Um, this is a nexus of international shipping um, and in, in incredible um, incursions, um, the mouth of the Fraser, where it meets the Pacific, um, and the so-called original capital of, of British Columbia. So um, the heart and the origins of extraction and mining and other kinds of industries that continue to have a stronghold today. So um, yes, I stand and sit um, committed um, to in a temporary, my temporary residence um, to undermining settler colonial futures on this land. Um, uh, for today, I, uh, I thought I was reading for five minutes. I can read for 10. Um, I, um, I, I thought I would read from my first book. Um, and in fact, the actual first copy that I read from for my um, book launch 10 years ago, um, just in the spirit of debut books. Now, and I know, um, David, you've got a lot of writing behind you. I know this isn't uh, um, where it all began, but uh, as far as a book object goes, it's a pretty special thing to bring into the world. Um, and your book is a really important book. So I'm, I'm absolutely uh, thrilled to read alongside you today. Shimmer. What would it be without birds? Beyond brand. One. Place your body. Black Mesa, Mama Day minds me, Manevo haunts us. Best don't stand in the bite, abandon the coast, form an open bay. Fine contraptions, golden bent wire shufflings, animated stricture, ganglia land with a sympathetic sunset every 45 minutes. The rest of the page is stave, staves, a lake not far from here. Small pond, hold up in a sickly greenback battered manufacturing blue stake in a two lane truck stop. Jangly fervor, pitcher pollution, broadcast colors hum of the earth, flush, two. A gash in the concrete staring back capacity since 6 a.m. Signs for homes, the Empress, Columbia. Quote, log in, extend, live, realize, end quote. Refugee silent remains accidental. Shift the mantle, nano, nano, cloud, quiet and neat, cozy rooms, stop and sleep. Tolerable cook and washing. They moved them and they moved them. Beasts of the notable parish, hard goods, rid surplus, empty spots, subprime time chicken, supple rates, food made with love, signs made with marker. Patch open private, white rose hiberniate tar sand barrel of oil per ton of soil, wide highway ramp is safe and piles of brush unidentified sparkle. Capillarity ensues, full and shiny aspect. Nasdaq and the dollar closed at a declining basis protecting the principal. 
retrograde pulmonary open outcry, these last years, these mast years, air of provident caches, erosive last years, tilt iron laws are rusty, emergencies on the rise, the hollow state scythe stocked, staked, first flags, and the solidly middle class ride up river, down back roads, and into bars. Can't and the door suits strange angles, numbers about letters, the real round assets. Imperial grant handlers evaporate product. The strand board, fewer exports, coastal job procedures do it better. Eliminate open and bring in legitimate, going down nice since 64 cents, ignorant stickers on fruit. The boreal initiative in situ projects, Cold Lake, military bases, peak, punches the line through, dust mites on funny money, arterial motives, gangrene's moratorium, Oklahoma, Houston, least our futures, guest worker, camps. The pain way Ray whip the crowd according to plan. Red next to the small blue erratic. We end the discussion tonight on fascism. Quote, a man sitting by an open window with a book, end quote. How we became terrorists. How the universe became lumpy and made gears. Random patched first map, high resolution, material aboard a gear bulk, freighter bound for the Atacama Desert, copper, del sulfide ore, Pan American ways that pay for pelt. Four, something should mark this place. In the sunlight, silver beams, endless numbered days. The slender fingers hold a clear plastic cup. The polystyrene husk reflects light. A stale bruise, the underside of the right eye, makes. What becomes of the skins? The iron skeleton, grills fixed on camera. The wide open pane, bowed, brown, dirt, dust, dead, flies. Five. The morning after. Lichen, vultures, flies, the dog who followed you up there. Everyone was speechless. Nothing else was alive. In the veil, bare blue strip, the riches between ridges, the slip of agitated rivulets, ruts, and ice droplets frozen to dust. The green alpine shoal, an impervious well, wicking, damp, dead pine, needle slow air, the whir. Flap of wing to weight ratios, the cargo, foraged plants cut young and cured by drying, threshing tinged ferment starts of fire, hearth to take the weather, gale, surf, snarl, lip, lib, curl, run with care, low brace breath, corner and draw strokes west, comely, catastrophe blooms. Hillside reddens to a field line, sailor's delight. Ocean was ever in a book. Sorrow's kitchen, sewn brick insulation. Witnesses intersect. Regimes come to as strangers hovered, concerned. Death brings flowers. Agrarian calendar wavers, crook and thumb warble. Machine waves screech, buteo, rhythm sounds dispersal. Debris, green soil, uniform. Wrists thick with repetition, iron lashes. Letters, part general, ledger, bank, back, book. Finance, real economy. Barb, brain, boot, blister. Fieldstone masonry, passive solar energy. Pot-bellied stove, free flow, smoke, cedar hair, the rhythm of the chopping to the rhythm of the saw, and how to hold your thumb on a fretboard. I meant a fretboard. Minds in the belly, seven. Neologistic distension buckled, missing, years, risk, reading. Brittle filament and sediment, small space in between can mean anything. Sublimating snow from the tip of Baker. Folks, if you're not muted, perhaps could you? Because uh, every sound is coming through the years. Neologistic distension buckled, missing years, risk reading. Brittle filament and a sediment, small space in between can mean anything. 
the sublimating snow from the tip of baker form of a cloud, the nursery crusades and the nouns dream to augment mutual reigns. Our lucky era riven with circuitry and self incompatibility, a run to the docks, obligatory reaches, agile replies, hard water stain, basalt cinder, cedar stand on crystal quarry, starling plain piers, unprotected quarry, an open sleep of surgery. Hard past the gate, longing for cornrows, the paths back to scrub brush, furrowed to rust under tassels, told us it was combine season, the rotating blades we could not hear or see, in the harvest black currents, a quart an hour, the river road, through squares, raw buckwheat, wildflower to a power, cardboard container. Just two more poems here. Social. We are functional by any means. Uneasy associations heat the place publicly above the din. Bleak double quotes, empty text, banner strip, pyrex, pipe, lugs, atmosphere, slips, park after dark, seeping, plume, and the network nodes, network nodes. The long tails against vertical strings, unprintable. Rock takes flight. Feathery wires go round, are off by heart flutter watery mothers in our mouths, cement arms, symptoms of harsh, bright, violent listening. But these are our modified limbs and they are linked, ink in the sky, black, blooming, pitch instance in your kino high katea, evening, finally, copper shimmer over staccato murmur, silhouette bodies, great blues. A hole for the part is a smiling year for spring, because water is something. Herons, a swath, the path, leaves, me branches, partial, embattled, hearts round like family, epaulets on shoulders aggregately owned. The flyover's wreath, new zest, or to combat, split upon the cord. Small gangs, goodly numbers. Plumage splendid and seldom brought to the ground. Thank you. It's the actual the actual hands in the room and everything. Um, thanks so much for that. Um, it's really kind of sweet. It's been a minute since I've looked at triage, but. Um, it's it's sweet to kind of hear from your first book in this context. I really appreciate it. Um, next up, we've got Anahita Jamali Rad, who's right here with me. Um, already introduced, but Anahita has been a, a big part. I, I remember when I was first planning to come back to Montreal from Toronto, there were a lot of reasons to be excited about that at the time. Like my life was changing in some big ways, but Anahita happened to have just moved to Montreal and it just kind of made it feel right. And we've been working on house house together for years, but really friendship and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sartorial excess and other things that uh, we don't always uh, necessarily have other people to talk to about. Um, and some things that we just, we just enjoy each other's uh, candor and sensibility on and a whole bunch of other things. So it's a privilege to share the space with you. Um, Anahita's, I assume is gonna be reading from whatever they like, but um, probably also from uh, still uh, from Talon Books, which I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing. Um, I, I've read, but I'm looking forward to hearing um, out loud. So welcome, Anahita. Can you hear us fine or should we plug in? You can hear us fine? Okay. Okay. All right. Hello. Um, thanks, David. Um, it's definitely an honor to be reading for your book launch um, and to be reading with you, Cecily. Um, it was really nice to hear from that book. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Um, um, yeah, I, this book, you were kind of working on it when we first met. And I remember when you were telling me about it and it was just sounded exciting and made me want to see it and hear it and, you know, 
really um, made me, yeah, want to publish it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, which is how we started yeah. House House together was kind of yeah, that was from kind of that first, starting point. <laughs> um, yeah, and so it's really great to be here at the culmination yeah. <laughs> of that work. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'm going to read from still a book that I had come out in the spring. Um, I haven't really been doing any readings from it, so this is like the second time I'm reading from it. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to read a few poems. Not going to take too much time from your reading. Um, the book starts with a series of vlogs, and I'm just going to read one of them before moving on. Log three. I waited every day, positioned it this way or that. My disjointed machinations felt symmetrical to a potential in exposing a persistence to find new ways of dying for those in unleveled parts of space. And here I am acting to get to the heart of it to our inmost possibilities for a day like yesterday or tomorrow when air just stings a little. I lie without movement. My vision waves lightly as if my head is a boat, as if this building is a, as if my to you stuck in loops of these alienated trajectories, capital flows and waves too. And maybe this moment gradually becomes something to look forward to. A felt configuration of the sidewalk, the road, other buildings, carefully planted trees, new structures of language, of matter transposed, dislodged history or vectors of colony, a pulsing in my head of abnormal materialities. When rupture requires life, take mine. Obfuscation makes visible the materials that constitute the things that money mediates and are peripheral to the still immediate, still fragmentary simultaneity of the past, still stuck in this loop of where you and I. A reticent assertion. To forget is to obey. A containment or overflow of what non-doing undoes, dissipates boundaries of current structures, collapses chronology and active predictabilities of a stillness that moves, mountains and microtemporalities of the immediate present. Some silence is violence. Some silence frees desire from seeking ends, is minimal contentment, is both inside and outside a system, refuses itself. This landscape is personal. Either the self is disembodied representation or unrepresentable. Technologies that touch a strange, that map make into capital, make every spectator into spectacle, constantly caress or bombard, extend and bloat the self to produce and reproduce. This is an opening, an unraveling of structure to turn from signal to noise, to make what's visible and visible, to remove the spectator and the spectacle. Excess exhausts the given. Quietly, I sit in any, every given moment in this unregulated material ground against my own repercussions an idleness that proposes gesture, a self suffocating inside, outside. The silence is no accident, diluted and blurred or blurring, where memory objects degenerate between gaps made material, a disruptive non doing. The formless precedes the form. 
This third world, third world text is a ghostly society, a disregarded unreality, is a future or abyss, looming or impersonal, is of intimate partitions and unconcerned compulsions, an inconsolable interiority to an inconceivable outside. This text has no center, no expectant crowd, no collective experience. Freed from doubt, this text is unburdened by time, eliminates itself, itself from both being and non-being. This text wastes matter, unforms the incommunicable, leaves nothing to be asked or answered. The silence is no accident. This immediate and momentary sensation of skin on woven wool upholstering the structure that holds my packaged flesh that somehow relates me to gravity is an absence of everything else. The simple pleasure of being still becomes nothing to me, becomes a distorted paralysis. My motionless body shifts perspective to this silent body of strangers slouches in the negative space of accumulation, dispossesses and collapses itself into pauses, waves in vacuous disquiet, the sanguine play acting of being in the world is a disillusioned giving into what massacre still waits. This bloodied sentence is not even a sentence to write, I want the body to disappear and then forget about it. And this is the last poem I'll be reading. Still. Straining a disillusion, an absent shiver, looking without, seeing. And maybe I disappeared, finally, without knowing what parts of me belong where or anywhere. I made myself irrecoverable, like dissipating smoke an indication of what once was. And since finally I disappeared without material or history, without a body or a place to be buried. Thank you. Um, thanks so much, Anahita. Um, I'm remembering now uh, how we met, which I guess is a couple of readings when you were passing through Toronto with Danielle, just before you were on your way to Montreal. I think you were on your way to Montreal to live in Montreal. Yeah. Um, and I just remember encountering your work the first time that way and uh, being like, oh, this person's one of my people, you know, like that kind of feeling. And they're cool. They're very cool. Um, and they're moving to the city I want to live in. I mean, it's a lot of things lining up. Um, so that was really nice. That was really nice. Um, so I'm going to read for about 15 minutes, like I mentioned, but I um, just kind of wanted to talk a tiny bit. Um, it's kind of interesting getting here all these years later. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking back on... Um, when I first kind of was thinking what this was going to actually be, and I was starting to compose some of the pieces and kind of tear apart some other pieces that would end up being the, the main components, let's say, of the family material early on that went into this book, um, which I guess I'm not really naming, but you'll figure it out soon enough. Um, I... Um, there was this whole process I knew I was going to go through. The point was to kind of be like, you know, see, this is all this kind of unresolvable stuff. This is why this stuff is unresolvable. And I wanted to do it in a way where really I was kind of not just saying that, but I was kind of documenting the process of that unresolvability, which I guess was never going to be an easy ask, but I'm not sure that I went about it the easiest way either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, so it was, a, it was a little bit of a process of... Um, being like, I'm going to try, I'm going to have to actually document this to the point of attempting to resolve it to show you that it's not going to happen. And that's kind of what happened. Um, and uh, 
there was something real about that, but there was also something multiplied about that because you kind of, I went through that process as Stan it can kind of testify to um, again when I, um, when I edited the book. It, it's kind of an inevitable thing. You can kind of go through these realizations and insights over and over and over again. You kind of lay out this debris field for yourself and it gets big enough that you start being like, did I, is that bit of debris visible? Did I make sure people can see that bit of debris? Did I answer for myself this option or that option? And you did, but you'll ask yourself again if you get close enough to the material. And there's something about kind of preparing these readings over the last several weeks with like kind of different tensions and different kind of considerations, not wanting to bring stuff that's too, too intense into various spaces that aren't um, necessarily the, be the best place for that. And also just like, you know, thinking of myself, but also just thinking about people in the room that might not be, they didn't show up for that. Right. And, and for a bunch of reasons, maybe that's not what they need to show up for. Um, but every time, kind of because of the way I've assembled this as this kind of dispersed, multi-formal debris field, um, I have to kind of re-enter it every time. And I have to kind of cycle through it in this kind of lighter, but kind of condensed way. So foolishly, I thought today was going to be easy. I thought it would be real easy to get this reading together. I'm like 15 minutes. That's not five minutes, which is really hard for this book. Um, but um, it wasn't uh, because in a lot of ways, I'm bringing some of the stuff that was fleshier, but also I'm bringing some of the stuff that frankly is just embarrassing. There's something about trauma that's embarrassing, not every part, but embarrassment is a big component. Um, so I'm going to be reading some of the stuff I've been kind of like relying on and um, leaning on, I guess, some of the materials in this book that kind of can hold it together for me formally and make it easier for me to get to those fleshy bits that I do bring out. Um, but I'm also going to read some of the embarrassing stuff that I kind of haven't been touching for all of the reasons that, you know, if you know, you know. So I should warn folks, I'm, I'm sure most people that have shown up have an idea of this, but um, you know there'll be they'll, they're, a lot of the material I'm going to read is going to have some um, some descriptions of some uh, physical abuse, some descriptions of child abuse um, across generations. So um, do what you got to do. I mean, I'm, I'm not expecting anybody to stick around or to not take a moment if they need to. Just you know, take care of yourself. Um, okay. Let's get going. Is everybody muted? I'm hearing some noises just before I get going. Okay. One. Won't let your bad self let go of your old debt. Tiring of your old self, won't let your maid bed, let your bad blood let your grown debt get that grown self to sleep. Back the bat knowing the bat arms the bat toy argument or more likely to turn truer repeated, look off her breath inching down a cursive length or what holding remains, a fear moving or a dark little didn't. Bat don't make me want to use this raised past her straining other side of a bat stopping him. Where was I watching from before she went into the house, just as it started up? I recall him on the French porch in a premium cotton barbarian rugby shirt and pleated 501s, high-tech hikers, mid-holler, about brunch and shopping or open houses way out by the golf course, 
through the ugly entryway circle thing, the 14 years it would take her to save towards ridding the house of it. The front door, I think, wide open, me flanking it from the inside, a little hidden, crying. The way she barely frowned at how to get him back in the house in a minute, pretending to not consult the real budget he would never be consulted on, which he had agreed to, even insisted on, and resented her for it. Her face still weathering the exhaustion from the last money argument. As seen from under the basketball hoop in the driveway, the haze of her next migraine still four years out from divorce, not a new piece of clothing on her in three years. Her white PVC Woco soles stained a permanent turtle green from mowing the lawn. The back of her hand on her face, wiping with sweat it can. My nose running with mulch, my feet in the grass, couldn't mow it myself, a relief at the time trailing her back in the house from the door on the side. She doesn't remember any of it, not that time, like it all happened to someone else. Two hours into the three hour argument about the pimento cream cheese and 12 grain sandwich, an interesting fact. The linen's closet, wide open corner, just outside my second floor boyhood bedroom, retains just enough of a sight line down past the upper staircase, over the jumbo soft maple dining room table he badly wanted, the one end then just a few months cratered by a wedding plate he had smashed on it. And between the long end of the L-shaped counter and the overhead kitchen cabinets, that the half-eaten sandwich just barely managed to belly flop sinks dirty dishwater when I whipped it and it splashed him. The sandwich's salmon egg pink smeared into the side of my nine-year-old face while he screamed, eat it. And I wondered if what was happening counted as physically abusive and if I had any immediate regrets. The interesting fact being, somehow I didn't think so. Somewhere my mother was out making sure we got fed, weekly clippings in hand. All over basic cable, cartoons were proceeding without my attention, indifferent. I don't think I said anything when she got in. Speaking of rehashing, I spoke to my mother on the phone earlier this weekend, not expecting to talk about this, but she had reread the book and brought this up. And I definitely did not check in with her about this at all. And it's weird the things we keep to ourselves. Two. The what the fuck I meant. And that slump, long wind clapping. Spit and storm, mean out my slow will. Had a drum out the old lived home, won't my slow chill say goodbye to me? A ghost off in the burning. One way to think of my father's mother is she made what we got. One routinely lined up a cotton hot iron to heat the bedroom doorknob. Two locking him on the other side when she needed a break. Three, the secured iron slowly rendering the knob unsafe. My father, four, banging on the door as she walked out of the apartment. Or just beat him. Sometimes with the iron, I saw the scars. A few of the many things she denies ever doing has claimed no memory of before he was taken away. And before she refused to take him back, before the white in his voice came in, before she helped raise a partner's son, her own with the Salvation Army, 
Before I became a story, he'd tell just about anyone, but never his only child. Note 13. Because 17 years in, it still didn't quite seem to my mother. She had done as she could, had done, had done all she could. She took notes, four weeks of arguments on a quote unquote seafood month calendar from the office. Spilling out of the square or rerouting to the weekly quote unquote fat counter box on six separate occasions. Fight calendar. Fruit of the ocean month, fight about the library, feculence, closing soon, about the computer, ecreamed milk, explosion, fight about seeing each other, herring, mackerel, and salmon, only 30 minutes, fight about language, sardines and melon, fight about badminton, dill shrimp, David not understanding the thing about badminton, fight about the garbage, the bed of rice, low fat feta, cantaloupe wedges. She can fight about chocolate, spicy French toast, the school's funding drive, let rest. Fight about liar, liar, and grams of fat at Video Plus. Fight in front of Eaton's, grease holder, parkour distance, about her not wanting to wait 45 minutes until it opens, a little extra. Fight about David's homework, pie plate, David's sleeping bag, thick trenches, about David asking how to save a file. Blank tuna about his school bag, vegetables, etc. zest, vanilla, and muscade. Night fight about his apple heart, broccoli, quiche, sans pot, about yelling, little bouquets. Fights about mentioning there's snow again the night before and about snow on the ground, surprise in the morning. A fine paste, fight about the gas, margarine. Fight about parquet for the office, a half moon of Boston and cheapness, fight about blaming, real Parmesan cheese, David and language, three herb, all our problems, the walking away, the folding, fight about the chicken, again. Not qualified to raise a black child on her own, his mother said. Can't divorce him, she said, and refused to talk to her at the service and would stare blankly at Bernard Shaw on CNN. That ain't a black man, she'd say, seemingly deaf to the sound of the sun left to the care of the state. You can walk like a nigga all you want, he'd say, but you ain't talking like one. What if his son became another nigger that doesn't trust him? When the call came, it came in her voice, 11 years removed, thinking we were speaking again, needing me to release the body and donate it to the state. Convinced the only thing between us was finally out the way. One day, she's going to read this. Somehow, I just know she will. And we may have already spoken for the last time. Three, because the minute I burned it, we were together again. Palm pleated in the pomade, all blue magic guarantee of our broke ass small pack wave, already too dark to see and that indigo shimmer shade, already our old bloodied teeth, our old flesh in a braid. About a month away from Medicare, which would, have, which, which would have afforded him his oxygen tank. Suddenly nothing left for me to protect against. And a sudden opening, a kind of compassion and preordained bad timing, neither of which got me closer to crying. Then over an early dinner, one late afternoon that spring, I queued up, he got game. I sat down to a two piece of fried chicken, 
a little treat after a good day of riding. A camera wafted over middle America on its way into the city, montaging basketballs and young men's hands, solo and mid game, slow motion airplay. Kansas, Indiana, the Northwest Seaside, Staten Island. Copeland's John Henry, a railroad ballad for orchestra, weaving every gesture and pasture into a single dancing opening. And no more than 15 seconds in, it started. Denzel's Jake Shuttlesworth brow and gaze in the noonday Huskow sun. Ray Allen's Jesus Shuttlesworth, the sun, and his pure shot spliced in. My mouth splayed so wide open, chicken was falling out of it. Three years later, it still works if I needed to. Something still new I'm trying to live without. It occurred to me only recently that the iron and doorknob trick may have been designed to protect him every time his mother did it from her, that it was meant to keep her out of the room, not just him in. There she was at the Human Gift Registry Memorial in her best candoble whites, in a wheelchair surrounded by her chosen family and friends, handing me a velvet pouch with a gold drawstring. And I tried to think, maybe she actually doesn't remember any of it. Or maybe what she took up in herself then. A thing at one time acted out on her, then acted out on him, was also happening to her. The way the injured get a mind to injure, what was happening not just to me, but to my father, not just to my mother, never to be negotiated out loud. Not that I know what to do with that, but I keep thinking on it. Note 24. The last place I saw or spoke to my father was the 12th floor, a 12th floor room at the Days Inn at the Trudeau Airport nine years ago. My jaw still clenching from the drive back from Burlington. His hug and demand that I call him, I love you, son. My secret resolve to never speak to him again. And I couldn't bring myself to say it back. Could I say it now? If I could bring myself back to it. Would I say dad? What left asking a different other us? A mutual last try rid of uh, clean and over. A tired fail to give, get better after or out. What might be one done for it? might cease to be just as little as wanted. Or singing my angry maybe dad's bad pentameter way. Now I get so carsick, I grieve. Brown bag, the lowing heat, the whole palpable filly ride all the way to the service, his old value human gift, dust in a pine can, six years in the Delaware, I ain't ever getting back, no plot ever safe from anyone, too late to help or stop, letting what I lost be what I lost. Now might have done my we own count fed no. On my palm fits nah. What a thought second voice clicking in just what rise kept keeping. 
said what would mean well the little remains i'm still walking in thank you um thanks so much for listening um i think uh should I, if, if folks want to turn on their mics especially um cecily and obviously anahita is already here um and uh maybe sonnet and we can we can just kind of you know talk a tiny bit um and if folks have questions comments anything please uh please drop them in the comments um and i'll be happy to just address whatever thank you um one thing i should say also that I didn't. Uh, there's a lot of thank yous in the book. Everyone that, that's been thanked hopefully has gotten to those. But Brick, from the beginning till the editing process, the production process, really put as much weight as literally no one told me anyone would put behind this book uh, into this book. So um, I, I can't say enough for the dedication to bringing this out into the world in the shape that, that we gave this object. Um, it really put me in a position to put my best foot forward. And I really, really appreciate it. Um, right on. Right on. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to scoot on into the picture? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks I mean, both for being how here. That was, how that was for you, David? How, like, yeah. Just, just, because I, you know, I was kind of really interested to hear what you decided to to pick, and then yeah. and, and the tone of voice that we take when we were talking about your poems with the editorial uh, eye on it is just it's just a different thing than than For bringing sure. that. Down. So how was that? It was good. It's weird. I mean, like I was saying earlier, preparing is the hard part. You know, the, this kind of like 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 little like tiny parts that I can kind of arrange and assemble kind of makes me engage with it differently than I might maybe like to ultimately but but at the same time there's this weight of wanting to like I gave myself the kind of tools and levers and I need to kind of like force myself to like bother with them you know what I mean um so there's a bit of that kind of like embodied performance aspect to it you know, just like having to kind of perform my way through each time but then by the time I've assembled the reading which takes longer than I'd like to admit I'm fine. It's not so bad. And it prepares me. It prepares me. You know, like the motions are before and it's needed. I mean, now I have a couple of blueprints and it'll be a little bit easier. I've been taking notes because I'm like, I can't fucking keep doing this every time. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need some scaffolding that I can kind of operate from. But uh, now once I'm once I'm at it, it feels good. It feels good. Um... So one, I think one experience that I had that no one else had was looking at the images while you were reading the poem, yeah, yeah, which yeah, I think yeah. is, was really helped like For tie sure. everything together and kind of the, the process that you were talking about yeah. was really like made whole yes. <laughs> by being <laughs> able to see both at the no, same no, time. No, absolutely. <laughs> uh and i mean hopefully people are experiencing that when they take in the book I, we we, we kind of like thought about oh should i like maybe have some images for this but the book is its own thing so um but yeah no the images i'm it's kind of funny that yeah you were just sitting yeah. here peering <laughs> over my shoulder yeah, exactly. <laughs> taking it in as we go yeah. uh but they do yeah it's all kind of one big scrapbook kind of thing you know yeah I find, I think I mentioned, but I, I, I find the visual components to be in some way a kind of relief um, or a kind of a, a respite um, yeah. and, uh, and, and really powerful interventions on text and the ways in which it just resists, you know, the ways in which we're boxed in by text sometimes. And yeah, so I really appreciate that. And, um, but it's also some, these readings, it's so strange in the Zoom format because we're all just like our different heads it's just so weird but um yeah we'll get back to real life but it's uh um yeah I hope people have the book in hand because it's it's neat to see it on it's also that's the first time I think I've really heard you read David so, so um, yeah, yeah. About that. <laughs> uh, yeah so I look forward to you know hanging out in real life someday yeah. um but the um your cadence is really um yeah I just wondered 
I don't know where that comes from for you. Like, where do you, how do you approach uh, your pacing and how do you make decisions about, so they're not just about your line, line breaks. There's, there's a lot of pause and breath and what's yeah. happening in that for you. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, I feel like it's, um, I feel like maybe you can both relate to this because uh, like kind of hearing us all in the same room, I think we, we all think a little bit about breath and pacing and cadence and in some pretty structured ways. Um, I think I lay a blueprint down that I can, that I can play with, I, you know, rules that are good enough that I know which ones to break as I go. And then um, that kind of keeps it a little alive for me. Um, especially with this, so much of it is like a performance of just trying to get the words out, right? So much of it is a performance of trying to make those words bearable on the page and out loud already. So it's kind of this ripe um, area to kind of really try to play with that, which in some ways gets easier as I go now that I've done a bunch of readings with this material, but it, in other ways, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like theater, right? Where it, you have to kind of keep it fresh for yourself, which means kind of breaking the perfect way that it sounded the, mm -hmm. the first time you figured it out or whatever. Um, so there's that weirdness to it. But yeah, I don't know where my cadence come from. Everybody always comments on it. And clearly now it's just what I do. And mm -hmm. it's a big part of how I think. And, you know, I mean, so many of these poems were thought out loud, you know, especially like yeah. the, the standalone prose poems that have an erasure somewhere else in the book, but that are their own piece. Um, you know, drafting and then just uh once it got to the point of like tightening them up it's just recording them over and over and over again so things get locked in um so it becomes a bit of an editing process and 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 literally just like getting it out out loud but also um it sticks with you you know mm -hmm. I'm trying really hard not to say the word jazz but it is a little <laughs> jazzy <laughs> You know, you just, you got a score and then you interpret the score each time. <laughs> That's the only time I will say that. <laughs> I would say um, the, the first poem you read, I've heard you read it yeah. a couple of times before. And this time it was really different, actually, I noticed. Huh. Um, and it, I really liked the rhythm of it because it helped kind of see a lot of what you were doing with it, even though yeah. it's just simple... For sure. Simple poem. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's it's interesting that you say that because I feel like when I'll, when I first started performing a lot of these pieces, like I think of that poem a little bit and I think of that fight calendar poem in particular, um, I did them a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. I think they needed, I, I thought they needed speed. And then the more time I spent with them and also the more time, like, you know, there was like a year where I didn't look at this at all, yeah. right? Like after, after, you know, Brick took it on um and even before that until I got I got going with Sonnet I kind of just didn't look at it at all and then when I got back to it I was like oh you know I did good I can I can actually slow this down yeah. and it does a different thing the textures are a little different and a little more a little bit more noticeable mm -hmm. um and that probably does me favors ultimately yeah but uh, that's interesting yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh sorry. oh we got a little Oh, thanks, Elena. I appreciate it. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. It's been a lot of readings the past the past month. So we'll see how I feel about it when I when I have to come back to it in a little while. I think maybe there's something coming up in November, but otherwise it's going to be a little bit of time away from it. Um, and thinking about you know other things that that are that are in the pipeline but uh yeah yeah it'll be it i think it'll be easier i think it'll be easier in some ways moving forward oh i can't hear you oh uh, that was me talking to my dog um but <laughs> <laughs> she's like is it time yet um, but I wanna, you know it is an interesting thing because uh you know it'll be with you forever right yeah like it actually will yeah. have a long it, or not you pick it up and put it down but sure um i would say briefly like my limited experience of managing to get to page with trauma um yeah. it, it really is a, a an ongoing and and changing tent and it's a, a place to return to see um where it's changed and how you've and totally. through language and thinking yeah yeah i mean i can remember so many a little bit of those loops i was talking about with just um yeah, you cycle back through after you've put it down for a while and you find yourself kind of re like you're re-encountering the insights 
And then you're falling back into that magical thinking of like, oh, if I just find the right words. And the whole point is that there's no right words. <laughs> There's no right words. You can act out the fact that there's no right words, you know, which is a bit of a painful act that's effective, but painful. Um, but you find yourself falling back into that whole like, oh, I'm just going to find the magic phrase and this is going to, this is all going to go away. And that's just not how any of it's made at all. Yeah. So it's, it's, it is interesting to get back to it. And I think it'll, it will stay with me in a number of ways. I think mostly I will get better at knowing where to draw the line with um, how I perform it, you know what I mean? Um, I think that'll be, a, that'll be a part of it getting easier, but some parts are, it's always gonna be, you know, a little bit like that Renee Gladman line at the beginning, it's always gonna be a little wet and there's, there's none that, it's not gonna dry. It's just not gonna dry. Yeah. Do we have any questions from folks in the, the audience? Whether in person or on the internet? Oh, there's one. Oh yes. <laughs> well, I mean, like, it's just so. So I'm speaking through a mask, so I'll try and. That's okay. Yeah, I'll I'll, re I'll repeat. Mm -hmm. Oh good. Um, I guess like in terms of your Caitlin's being a recognizable imprint that is like, you know, it's it's an architectural, it's a structural piece that is yeah. there that you're you know you're moving through it as you're constructing them and as you speak them. That's definitely like I'm flatter you a bit, but that's by far the most stunning iteration of Fight Calendar. That I've heard you work through, right? And the the like, okay, jazz. But I hear a slap and a caress. There's this like strike across, and then a receding that is soft. Yes. That is innate to how you speak these poems. And I guess that this is the one place where, because you know, you are not engaged in a project of reification, but there no. is this coherence and this like synchrony that's a bit, I guess. Uh, yeah, like it, it, I, I observe it as you try to describe it. It's, I'm just curious if that's something, I mean, you even see in your, or here rather, <laughs> like. Yeah, can you put that in a simple question, Jess? I apologize. <laughs> Jess doesn't suck, but didn't fail. Jess, the real life is working this writer. But uh, yeah, I mean, like if I were to use the words slap and caress to describe like the, like, you know, forward and then receive yeah. motion of, how you read these pieces. This is uniquely a book where those words are problematic in this context. Or yeah. they're the most appropriate words. And I'm asking, sure. does that have? Yeah, there's like, okay, so maybe on some level there's the felt memory and then there's the performance of the felt memory in a like ontological sense, right? Um, and like in a, in a what? Oh, yes, I will repeat the question. So Jess was saying in the sound of the poems and the way I perform them, there's you can hear this element of slap and caress. And obviously those are loaded terms um, in the context of the book. And but maybe also they're, they're correct terms or they're appropriate terms or how exactly, you know, does that modulate or, or is that something that's kind of intentional? And I'd say yes. I mean, um, I, I think um, yeah, so what I was saying is there's there's kind of the the felt process, let's say, of this kind of unearthing and digging through. And then there's simultaneously this balancing act of, I guess, a kind of ontological performance of that, a kind of of like, you know, this is the experience of going through it. Um, so so for me, there's that, right? There's there's the softness of the one that's trying to shape what's happening with the other as things go along, all while letting enough of that kind of actual felt thing happen in real time. But then as far as like on a sonic level or the way it's performed or the way basically I perform those performances meeting each other or those, those aspects meeting each other, I feel like there's an element of, it took me a while to just figure out what I was doing with these short sentences. <laughs> like they, they, they work as blocks, but I think for the longest time I thought of them as breathless. And then I realized, mm, maybe that's not how those thoughts really work. <laughs> um, but then they kind of can go back and forth and they can either be a slap or a caress. They can kind of like um, play off each other that way, but also alternate, also change over time. Um, I don't want to pat myself on the shoulder. You know, I don't want to pat myself on the shoulder, but I tried really hard to compose these things. <laughs> 
to where I had options. I just had options um, to just get it, get through it in a certain sense. Um, and, you know, I mean, at some point along the way, you start thinking like, maybe I wrote something that's useful to people that went through this kind of thing. Uh, it takes a minute, but maybe you get there. And then you want as many entry points as possible. And I think ab about this kind of interplay of softness and hardness as, as an element of that maybe, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, we got a little question from Fanuel. Thanks, Jess. Uh, I'm curious to hear a bit about some of the decisions you made when selecting which memories to engage. I mean, what were some of the negotiations, form style, family, and so on that you found yourself wrestling with? It's interesting. So, I mean, a, 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 in a lot of ways, for folks who've read the book, you know, but for folks that maybe haven't gotten into it to, to it yet, I mean, you know, there were limited resources. So on the one hand, my father's died, which is kind of what prompted a lot of some things I could accept once he was gone in a way that I really didn't have room in my life to accept when he was around, which kind of led to one thing led to the other, to the other, to the other. But it took a number of years after that before I, I, I found myself working on anything like this. Um, and step one was attempting to, yeah, put, uh, put a lot of the memories in one place that would um, at the very least give an idea of what, what, what it was like for me and my mother, you know, what were the symptoms of the day to day and would attempt also this thing, this idea of the unresolvable, you know, here's all the family stories that either you don't hear about because they're not that kind of family story. You know, I remember being in class um when I was doing my MFA and people were just going back and forth talking about family storytelling and I mean you know that's complicated for a lot of people I think um and um so I wanted to get some of those family so some, some, some of those family stories in one place but also this is something that maybe emerged in that process but more so later on also um these stories that that are difficult stories and there is a an accepted version of that difficult story there's a reiterated over and over again version of that story whether it's from a parent whether it's from yourself that's just the bearable way of of, of telling it that's um the way where like the subject positions have become static and understood um you know the dynamics are kind of ingrained um, so a bunch of those kinds of stories are basically what went into my initial attempt to get some of these materials together and that still felt way too editorialized. And the more I looked at that material, the more I thought, you can see the symptoms of what, was it, what it was like being around him, but you didn't really get to see a ton of what it might be like for him. I went into some of the material about um, his mother um, in that initial material, but that just tells a little bit of like, okay, this is kind of, you know, this is kind of what he dealt with but it doesn't get into the whole area of you're dealing with a person with tons of trauma um, in a climate where there's not really room to talk about that or get it out in any understandable way. And most of his daily strategies for navigating the world are <laughs> when he gets angry about various ways of saying, I'm not being understood. Um, and various kind of feelings of scarcity um, that I don't even necessarily get into the book, but but like really kind of informed the ways I, I kind of started to think about him. So after that initial material, I started kind of tearing it into smaller pieces that would eventually become the nucleus for mostly the soft erasure pieces in the book, the pieces that are like gray and black, like the ur text, the background text for those pieces. Um, I started to look into kind of grayer areas areas that didn't really paint a black hat, white hat kind of picture. Um, areas that without me really realizing it were pointing to what our family story, at least on my dad's side is, which is just dispersal over and over again. It's, you know, my, my great grandmother coming to uh, New York from Jamaica alone at 15-ish um, and her daughter, my grandmother, getting given up. And then, you know, there's just like these cycles of um, one, one generation trying to get away from the last generation. That's kind of what I know about that side of the family. That's what it's been. And it's always been kind of like each generation is represented by a single actor. There aren't family units. 
that's not really what any of this has looked like. Um, so you get to some of those things and you start thinking about dispersal, you start thinking about the tail end of the situation, the cycles that are at play, and the story just gets more complicated. And, and then the, the, the initial story that seemed like it didn't have many outs or didn't have any outs, and there's a process of trying to document that. There are more no outs to document. Um, and that's kind of where, uh, where, where things took me to. Um, that process was a lot of just talking to my mother over and over again about a number of things. You know, these questions that you can ask and these stories you can ask about that um, you hear it one way the first 18 times and then the 19th time is a completely different story. So there was a lot of that. There's some little points like that that ended up informing certain changes that happened along the way. And um, those formal changes came after that first process of, um, of kind of cobbling the material together. And then I was like, you know, this, this isn't really doing it for me, but at the same time, I want to document this work. I want to kind of um, give a space to it, but I want to do something on top of it that makes it clear that I don't think it gets there. And then that thing on top of it also doesn't get there, but the relationship between them and the relationship then across the book between these different pieces that are, you know, the one based on the other and the way that they kind of interfere with each other across the whole work. Um, hopefully is there's that one gesture that's clear, which is this isn't getting there. Um, and a lot of the other gestures kind of came out of, of that kind of um, enshrine the processual, but there's no resolution here. There's no, there's no final product. There's no, there's no like, okay, that's the epiphany that fixes it all. You know, there's none of that. I hope that kind of answers your question in a very long-winded way. <laughs> yes, all capital letters. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's it. Thank you all for being here. Um, thanks, Fanuel, for the question. Thanks, Jess, for the question. Um, and uh, yeah, this has just been nice uh, at the tail end of this whole thing to actually feel like, yeah, having that space to just kind of be like, okay, here's some of the, the tougher, more embarrassing stuff has been, has been really good. Um, thanks, Cecily, for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Dinner. I'm looking forward to, to a couple of other things that we'll be kind of interacting together about um, down the pike. But, um, and thanks for Anna Eden for being here in person. And thanks to everyone in person here. I'm a Leo, so I, I like having an actual clapping in the background. <laughs> Aww, when, when's your birthday? 30th of July. Okay, August 10th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you folks. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Hey, thanks, David. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.